The last thing we're going to be doing is modeling with parametric equations. When was the last time, or when can you think of previous times that we've done modeling in either pure or mechanics? We did modeling quadratics, didn't we? We did modeling quadratics, and that was about things. Can you remember often what the examples were about in modeling quadratics? Throwing stuff, like throwing rugby balls or throwing tennis balls and things. That was often one of the things. Um, and there was also another modeling one, which I'm interested to see if anyone, straight lines, which people did terribly on in the practice exam, because people didn't recognize that that plant growing as a linear model was just finding the equation of a straight line. It wasn't done terribly, but it wasn't done as good as it should be for it just being a straight line graph. So we're going to try and now do some other things to add to our modeling kind of arsenal of different things that we can do, OK? So we're now going to be learning about how we can model things using parametric stuff as well, OK? So at the start of this chapter, parametric equations are frequently used in mechanics, particularly where the x and y position, the Cartesian variables, whenever I say Cartesian, I just mean x and y, uh, depends on the time t, the parameter. So we're going to have a look at an example here of how a plane is flying and how we might use parametric equations to try and solve some of the bits about this problem. So let's read through this question, because I think this sounds quite overwhelming, some of the bits at the beginning. It says, a plane's position at time t seconds after takeoff can be modelled with the following parametric equations. x equals v cos theta t, and then the m is, is the units, it's metres, so it's talking about its x position, and y is v sine theta t metres, and t is greater than zero, where v is the speed of the plane, Theta is the angle of elevation of its path, x is the horizontal distance travelled, and y is the vertical distance travelled relative to a fixed origin. In other words, this is how far it's travelled across is x, this is y, and the angle of elevation is how, like, the angle that it's making with the ground as it's taking off, okay? Now, pardon? And then we're going to put some values in, because it's also told us some other things. It says, when the plane has travelled 600 metres horizontally, it has climbed 120 metres. And the first thing it wants us to do is to find the angle of elevation. Now, before we even get to that, I want to look back at these equations that we've got here, because I've got a few different variables. What vari Can you just tell me some of the variables that are in this question? You know what I mean, like, uh, like speed. V is one of the variables. We've got theta and t. We've got v, theta, and t. Now, you've got to be careful here because v, theta, and t, we need to make sure that we are acknowledging which one is the parameter. And when I say parameter, I mean the one that is the thing that's linking the two of them together like it has done in those previous questions. So out of v, theta, and t, which is the one that you think is the parameter? Pardon? T. T is the parameter. T is the one that's kind of in the background. And it seems like theta and V are going to be constant. I don't particularly like the way that this question is worded because it doesn't tell you that theta and V are constant. But theta and V in this question are going to be constant. The reason that they've left them as kind of like open to interpretation here is because you may use this model where you're going to then change the speed of the plane and you're going to change the angle of elevation. So the important thing to note here is that t is the parameter. OK, so the first thing it wants us to do is to find the angle of elevation. Now, previously, they would tell you what x or y is equal to, but this time they haven't told us that. They have instead told us this. So what does that tell me? OK, so the base is 600. But what does that tell me about these equations that I've got? Good. x is 600. So v cos theta t is 600. So that is telling me that x is equal to 600. And then this second bit that I've got here, that it's climbed 120 metres, that's telling me that y is 120. So you're right. I'm now going to get these two equations, which are that 600 is equal to v cos theta multiplied by t, and 120 
equals v sine theta multiplied by t. And I've got a lot of unknowns there. I've got a lot of unknowns. I've got v, I've got theta, and I've got t. And somehow, they want us to find out what theta is. Now, we've done this trick a couple of times before. Think to yourself, what was the trick when you've got these two equations here and we want to solve them simultaneously? What maybe is something that I could do here? And it's not substitution and it's not elimination. Pardon? You can try and turn them into tan. And the way that you do that, if I call this one equation one and this one equation two, what do I do with those equations? Good, you do two divided by one. We've seen this trick maybe one or two times before. So I'm going to do equation two divided by equation one. A bit like when you would do uh, elimination in simultaneous equations like in year 10 where you would add the equations together or you'd subtract, you'd subtract the equations. You can do the same with dividing. So if I'm going to do number two divided by number one, I would have 120 divided by 600 from the left-hand side. And I would have v sine theta multiplied by t divided by v cos theta multiplied by t. What's going to happen on the right-hand side? The v's and t's will cancel. And what will happen with the sine and cos? It becomes tan. Okay, So we've now been able to actually solve that equation. So 12 over 60 is 1 over 5, I think. So you get tan theta is 1 over 5. And so theta is, well, and this is where it's kind of annoying now because we're probably going to want to give theta in degrees. Why do you think I want theta in degrees now, even though we've been doing radians this whole time? Because mechanics, we're talking about an aeroplane. And if you sp spoke to a pilot and you told them about the angle of elevation in radians, they probably wouldn't have a clue but you want to be able to give it in the context that seems most appropriate. So we'll think about what theta is in degrees now. How much is it in degrees? It's 11.3 11 degrees. OK, great. Part B of the question. It now says, given that the plane's speed is 50 meters per second, find the parametric equations for the plane's motion. So yeah. So you could, but I, the reason this triangle is actually here is because later on it says show that the plane's motion is a straight line. And like, I don't know, by using that triangle, it's almost like we've used that information later on. I've added this extra bit in. Um, but yeah, you, I guess you could use it from the triangle as well. Yeah. Um, so it says the plane's speed is 50 meters per second. So that's telling me that V is 50. And that's a fixed value. It's not changing. The, the plane is going at 50 meters per second. So we're going to find the parametric equations. That means find out x equals blah, blah, blah in terms of t and y equals blah, blah, blah in terms of t. So x would be equal to 50 multiplied by cos of 11.3 times t. And we're just going to work out what that is. Well, I'm hoping someone's going to work out what that is because my calculator, I don't know where I've put it. Oh, here it is. Did you multiply it by 50 as well? You did? Are you in radians mode? Because I have 49.03t when I did that. And for y, y is 50 sine 11.3t. And I get that y is 9.81 t. And both of these things I've done here, I've done to two decimal places. So these are the parametric equations that we've got here. This is not a very exciting parametric equation because it's just telling you that every second, the x position is being increased by 49 meters. So every second, it's going at a constant speed in horizontal distance. And it's also going in a constant speed vertically. Every second, the y position is increasing by 9.81. OK? So we've done A. 
with dumb B. And we want to find the vertical height of the plane after 10 seconds. So if it's saying after 10 seconds, I'm hoping that when you see something like after 10 seconds, you're saying in your head, oh, what are you saying? T equals 10, OK? You're taking everything that's written in like English and you're translating it into maths so that you can just put it into the, the equations that you need. So y would just be equal to 9.81 multiplied by 10, which is 98.1 meters. So after 10 seconds, it's at 98.1 meters. For part D of the question, it says show that the plane's motion is a straight line. What do you think that's actually asking for us to do? Put it as a what kind of equation? A linear equation, but there was a, a special word that means it's not a linear. I mean, it is going to be a linear one. We want it to be linear, but we want it to be a Cartesian linear equation. OK, because if we can just make it a Cartesian equation and show that it's a straight line, then we know what its path is. So I'm going to try and find a Cartesian. It doesn't tell us to find a Cartesian, but if I, I know what a Cartesian line looks like. So I can make t the subject of this first one. So I've got x divided by 49.03 is equal to t. Just rearranging this. And then I can substitute it in for y. So y is equal to 9.81 multiplied by x over 49.03. And when I do 9.81 divided by 49.03, I actually get 0.199999x. So I get that y is equal to 0.2x. And this is a straight line. So it's just asking for us to put it in Cartesian form. And then we have the questions that are to do with modeling. Before we talk about their one, they've said explain why the domain of t, t greater than 0, is not realistic. I want to see if we can just talk about some other things to do with this model that is not very realistic. Um, one of the things is that the speed is 50 meters per second. It hasn't varied at all. The speed is remaining constant at 50 meters per second. Is that how a plane flies? Probably not. Another thing, what else has remained constant that's probably not going to remain constant? Exactly. So it could decelerate. So the V wouldn't stay the same. There's something else that's constant in this question that I don't think. Sh theta. And the it's just saying that theta is like always, the plane is always going to have an angle of elevation of 11.3 degrees. But what they've said is what is the problem of the time just being greater than zero? Think about what greater than zero actually means. Yeah, five seconds, 10 seconds. It means never ending. It means this model will apply forever, for all time and that the plane <laughs> would eventually be like hitting like the moon or Mars or something. Pardon? It's going to keep, not only is it going to stay up in the air, but it's going to keep, uh, keep getting higher and higher and higher. OK, so what we should say here, explain why the domain of T greater is not realistic. So we should say uh, this, this would imply the plane would continue to rise up indefinitely. And you just need to say a little extra bit just to say which is not realistic. Just bring it back to what the question said, which is not realistic. So these kind of things, you've got to always look at what they've told you is true and then just be like, OK, well, does that seem sensible? Some of the time it seems sensible, but this model is going to say that the plane is just going to keep going up and up and up and up and up and up, and there's no limit on t. They should have said that this model is only going to apply between, I don't know, 0 and 10 seconds for the first 10 seconds of flight. And then afterwards, who knows what happens to the flight. Maybe it then goes more steep, or maybe it flattens off. I'm not a pilot. I wouldn't want to be a pilot. Too scary. OK, so I'm going to ask you to do questions one to four from the next exercise, which is exercise AD for homework. They're all 
quite simple parametric equations, um, but they've all got like modeling context with them. And then next lesson, we're going to do another example like this with some trigonometry stuff, okay? So I'll put that all on, show my homework. <laughs>